Good morning, guys. It's May 27th, 2021. I'm Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop, and thanks so much for letting me do this live stream on a Thursday. I have um, a family thing to go to tomorrow, so super excited to still do it this week. And this week is my favorite block from Socialites, and you can see it's a little sewing machine. It's designed by Lori Holt, who's in the chat, and it's block 33 and we're calling it Inspire. And this fabric is Homestead by April Rosenthal and Moda, and that's Lori's block. And she used um, one of her B background pieces and her prim fabric collection, and I think that's a nine inch. So this block is pretty easy. Um, I'll kind of show you what it's basically made up of. This is basically straight piecing. We've got some corner squares here, straight piecing and straight piecing. So it's actually pretty easy. Now to start off today, I decided we're gonna go ahead and use Lori Holt fabric for this. And I've already cut my pieces because I think it's, I think y'all can cut your pieces. So we're gonna do nine inches today. And the reason we're gonna do nine inches is I would like to make a little pillow or a quilt block or something. And I don't really want a three inch out of this. So I would just put a little sticky note and then cut your nine inches. And so for this, my tip would be when you're doing a block that's more of a picture block, What's great to do is lay out your fabrics, cut them, stop, and then we're gonna lay them out on this design board how it looks, and it will make it quicker to sew. So I just follow my picture. So A, and then I'll follow my instructions, but picture blocks are good to do this way because you can actually see it forming and I just leave my um, little alpha bitties on here for now. Let's see what that one is. That one is J. So this is just how I laid out. Let me know if y'all have any questions. And this is her B basic fabric along with a B background fabric. and I'm just kind of following the pattern. I'm starting with this, and then if I get confused, I just look throughout the pattern. But this just makes it easier because you can actually see what you're doing and you're actually less likely to make a mistake. The I goes on the bottom, I know that for sure, and the G goes here. And then I think this goes here. And then my last F will go, I just need to find that last F, it's gonna go up here, I think, yeah, it's gonna go here. So now I have everything kind of laid out. I'm gonna move my alpha bitties. And here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do all of my half square triangles first. Sorry, I'm gonna go ahead and do all of my corner squares first. So there's only four. So here and here. And what I'm gonna do today is draw a line from corner to corner with a friction pin and then put it on the edge, pin it, and you can either pin it or use a glue pin or you could use the Acorn Precision product. And I do have some of that down here, so I'm gonna show you different ways you can do this. And I'm just gonna keep this so I can just make sure I've got everything going the right way. And I'm not gonna pay attention to the direction of this fabric because the hearts go all the directions. So there's a couple ways you can do corner squares. You can use this glue. It's, what is it called? Seam Align Glue. 
And if you're using this product, you want to do dots, not lines. Or that's what I do. So I just do little dots. And it's going to hold it. And just put it here. So that will hold it. It'll dry in a couple seconds. So you can do that. Or like this one, you could pin. I'm just going to use the glue today, I think. But you could also pin, and I think I have these on right. And if you're going to do a big quilt with a ton of pieces, if you do this, it saves time because then you let it dry and then you just sew them all at once. And then this one is the top right. So this one you could either pin, but you could also just use a glue pin, or glue stick, or glue something, something, sew line glue pin. Or you could just pin, like I do. So I'm just showing you different ways to get the same result. And you can use any, um, any method you like. Now, I will say with this, it has a really nice tip. And if it gets gunk, you just pull it off. And then you got to make sure this goes back on because it keeps it from drying out. So you just put that back on. So I'm just gonna draw straight on these lines. I'm gonna use a quarter inch, I'm gonna use an open toe foot. So I'm gonna use this foot right here where I can see my stitches. I'm using RFL 2000 and See, I don't even have to, the pin, it's not coming off. So that's that, this one's glue stick. It's not coming off. Now the, the friction pin that I use will come off with heat later. And this one, it's not coming off. And when you have a lot of pieces and you use the glue, it's helpful because then you don't have to take the pins out and you don't have to worry about a pin over here or a pin over here sticking you. And I just started using this product. So those are all my corner squares. So now I can go back to a quarter inch foot. I like to use a foot with a guide. And then from here, I'm gonna cut a quarter inch away from the seam. And then we're gonna iron and I'll kind of talk to you about what has worked for me and not worked for me with this glue when you press open. So I don't think this block really needs to be pressed open, but I'm going to press it open anyway just because that's how we wrote the instructions. But before I go to the iron, I'm going to show you a couple things. So when I put the dots, I put them out here, and when I press open, there won't be glue there. Well, this one was glue stick, but, and this one, you can see there's a little bit of glue right there, but when you open it, it's, it doesn't, um, I did it on my dinosaur blocks. See, there's a little bit of glue there. It doesn't gunk, it didn't gunk up my iron at home, but I did try to put the glue kind of out here, not too close to here so that, you know, you don't get it here. But that was the one thing that I didn't know when I first started using that product. So I kind of had glue everywhere because I didn't think that through. And I'm using the glue when I do my dinosaur quilt because that has so many pieces. So I'm just gonna press to one side. Why is this on today? I almost missed. So we did put a notification up, but we're on today because my kids are having a school event tomorrow and I don't miss anything that my kids go to. Looking to the future socialites and wondering if you will keep the block sizes at three, six, and nine, or will you branch out? I don't know. We haven't designed it yet. We might keep it the same so that you can interchange. Okay, so now here I've ironed, and now look, it's kind of stuck. The glue's kind of stuck. That's the glue pin because I probably put too much. 
but it'll come off. Oh, that was probably, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna open that, that did not work. Let me see. Yeah, I put too much glue, but it will come, it will come open if I force it, but I'm not gonna force it. So you just have to be careful with the glue. And then this one is dots. So because it's dots, it's not gonna stick all the way. I always tell my husband I'm having breakfast with Kimberly as I take my class instruction. Oh, hi husband, I hope you like me. What size needle do you use? I use an 80-20 universal. Lori, this pattern would be so cute as a quilted sewing machine cover. Oh, it would. And she's gonna demo this on her channel too, so make sure you're subscribed to Lori Holt's YouTube channel. And then, just put the little clapper. And then here, we need to sew these together, these together, and this together. So I'm gonna leave the clapper on these pieces so they lay flat while I do this. So when I'm doing this, I'll just go to and from the design board to do my pieces and then put them back where they started. Good morning, Kimberly. I have seen a Yeti tumbler with Kimberly Stitch Squad on it. Was this from FQS in the past? Yes, it is. Um, will it be available again? Um, could do another one I would probably want to do a different design though just to have something different what is the name of the glue with the metal tip it's called acorn precision piecing seam align glue are you putting your dinosaur quilt online I need to make one Yes, it is online. If you search Dinosaur Quilt Kit Elizabeth Hartman on Fat Quarter Shop, it should show up. I'm just using the exact fabric and the exact placement she did. Do you starch all of your fabric, including flannel and batiks? So I never, I never sew with fabric that's not starched, but I don't ever use batiks and I rarely use flannels but if I were I would I would starch them so I'm just gonna pull to and from my design board and just press open is this glue a new technique yes so it's not actually you could glue anytime with this this product has so line glue pen has been around forever I just heard about this from a couple of customers had emailed me probably like 10 of y'all had emailed me to try it so I tried it and I mean, I think it's one of those things where you try it, see if you like it, if you like it, use it. Um, you know, but pens work just as good. Oh, I think Kimberly meant 80-12, yes. Yeah, 80-12, and I just do universal. Now, if I'm gonna quilt something, I'll use a top stitch. Like if I'm gonna do these pin cushions that I'm gonna show you, I use a top stitch needle. But normally I just use an 80-12, and I just use Schmetz. How would you describe Aurifil thread color chalk? Like cream or off-white? I don't know. Let me look at it online. We'll pull it up online and see. Have you thought about doing new t-shirts for FQS? We could do one. I mean, y'all tell me what y'all are looking for though. I don't know what, yeah, oh, let's see, chalk. I would say that's more of a, the chalk thread, I would say it's kind of a white with a little bit of gray in it and a little bit of cream. So it's kind of all the colors. That one's kind of hard to describe. And whether you use a pin or, you know, no matter what you use, you're gonna get the same result. You just have to use what works, gives you the best result. And that's why I tried it, because I think it's good to always try something new and see what you think. Okay, so this is the layout. So I'm gonna sew this to this and then iron. 
and I will, so on this, okay, see right there? Let me put something dark under it. See how on top this little corner square is sticking out? It's hard to tell because it's white, but the little corner square right there is a little bit fatter than the red. I'm going to chop that off before I start. So I'm going to take a ruler and just put it right there straight with the red and chop that off so that it's more accurate and then put this on here. And here you could do either pinning or glue. Now, when you do this, I would be less likely to glue here because if you glue, when you press open, you're definitely going to have glue here because you're pressing open. Now, if you weren't pressing open, you wouldn't touch the glue. So I would not use that glue here because you're pressing open. I would just use pins. So let's see. And then I'll just sew this with a quarter inch seam. And I'm just going to use the seam guide. I'm going to use the um, Lori Holt seam press. Seam presser? Quick press seam roller. Instead of getting the iron out. What kind of juki do I have? I have a TL-2010Q. We have it listed in our Amazon shop. And at home, I also have a platinum edition, which is just a silver. So here, these two are going to touch right here. So what I'll do, put right sides together, pin the right side and then the left side, and then I'm going to make that side work. Now, if you want it to be perfect, you draw a line a quarter inch here. I can do this by sight at home, but I can't do this by sight on the, on the camera. Is there enough fabric in the dinosaur quilt to starch? I hope so, because I starched. <laughs> Are you going to be on next Friday? No, I'm going on vacation, actually. So I will have a premiere video that comes out showing block 34. So there will still be a socialites tutorial, but I'm going to be on vacation. So from here, what I've done is I've lined up my two drawn lines right in that quarter inch section. I want that quarter inch line where the red and white touch to touch the red and white here. I would love a FQS shirt using the t-shirt used with stitching with the housewives. Oh, the t-shirt. Yeah, we could do that. I'm not going to do black, though. Okay, so right here when I was stitching, I wasn't paying attention and I um, didn't leave that open, but I'm just going to leave it. I'll just fix it. I don't think it's a big deal. So here I'm just going to kind of finger press it and then add this piece. And then we'll iron. Do you machine embroider? No. Why don't you ever sew with batik fabrics? I don't like the way they smell, I don't like the way they feel, and I don't like the way they look. So that's just a personal preference. Are you pressing to one side and then opening seams? Yes, that's how I press open because if I don't do it that way, I'll burn myself. Would you recommend using the glue for beginners rather than pinning? No, I would pin as a beginner. And I'm going to use that glue when I do corner squares mostly. What is the difference between those glue and the Sue glue Lori uses for applique? Okay, let me try to find that glue. Here it is. Okay, I'll show you in a second. I'm going to, let me finish this and I'll show you. So from here, I press to one side. Now I'm going to press open. So if you had used that glue, when you do this, you're going to get glue on your iron. So that's why I kind of do it on my corner squares. And then here, now you'll see even on the back that red and white touch right there.
Okay. I'm gonna get a scrap piece of fabric real quick. And I'll talk to you about the glue. Now I'm no expert on glue. <laughs> okay, this is a Soline glue pen. This is the exact same product that comes labeled Sue Daily glue pen. Same exact product made by the same people, it's just private labeled differently. So Soline, it's just that um, Sue Daily's is much cuter because it's pink. So that's that glue. I use this all the time. This is like a clear glue, so when I put this down, it's clear. It's pretty sticky too. And it works. I will say it works. Now, I don't applique, but this is the Sue Daily applique glue. And I can tell right now this thing is gunked up because we haven't used this. I haven't used this in ages. So what you would do here to get the glue is you would put your, put your pin in the top. And I can see that glue. And it just, you clean it out. And then you throw this away. And then this glue is going to come out fatter. And it's probably just as safe. And you just do the same thing. And when you come back, they'll both be the same. I think this one will clog up more. I don't applique though, so I've never actually used this very much. This one I know is for PC, and I'm sure you could use it for applique, but since I don't applique, I can't speak on that. So it's just glue. You just want to make sure you're using a glue that is meant for fabric, which these are, and that's acid-free, which those are. And some people use Elmer's glue, like from the grocery store. So whatever you want to use. Okay, so when I'm looking at this, okay, and this is because I'm on camera. That's what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna blame it on being on camera. Okay, when you put this ruler down, you see that white picking out? You can chop it off. Because now it's flat, and so when I add the top, it's gonna be neater. And when I'm at home, I do that. I'm super, super kind of OCD about that. So here, I'm gonna kind of move this out of the way. I'm gonna put this right sides together. And here I would pin. This is way too long of a seam to be gluing. Now the reason I would glue those corner squares is because if you're doing like 50 corner squares, you can put the glue on there and then come back another day if you want. Now you could set it with, you could set the glue by putting the iron on it. But since I use the friction pin, that doesn't work for me. And here you just sew with a quarter inch seam. Okay, so I'm gonna move this like this and just use the seam roller. Do the same thing on the back. If you do a t-shirt, I hope you do teal or aqua. Would you give an update on the fabric for the mystery quilt in June? So that has not arrived. Our shipment has not arrived, so it will be June or July. I don't have a ship date on that. And when we get that mystery block of the month, we have to cut it all up. So we can't ship the mystery the same day it arrives because we have to cut all those kits. So here, you can either draw those lines or you can eyeball it. So I'm gonna eyeball it and see if it works. Now, that's what I do at home. I don't draw those lines at home. What is the cut and press you're using? I thought you couldn't iron on it. I'll show you in a second. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm gonna pin here so that this stays pressed open since I didn't iron it. Okay. 
and it matches. Yay! It matches. So we just have to add the bottom piece. I'm going to just use the seam press and then add the bottom piece. Is there enough fabric in Lisa Bond Jean's R Flag Stands for Freedom kit to starch? Um, I don't know. We'll ha you would have to ask her because she's the one who did the fabric requirements for Moda and I haven't made it. What is a batik fabric? So a batik fabric is a fabric that is hand dyed and has like different um, hand blocks or just different, you'd have to just search batik and you would see what it is. It's a different look. Is Flying Geese foundation paper listed as the finished size? Yes. Cajun shrimp <laughs> for a t-shirt, that's funny. I don't know if anybody would wear that. And then, hi Kimberly, all the way from Greenland. I enjoy your tu tutorials and track shows, thank you. And then she asked if there will ever be a chance that batiks will be in the sew sampler boxes. And I can tell you that no, they will not be. Because too many people do not like batiks and we have done several surveys and um, batiks will not be in the box. But we do have a batik fat quarter club that you can join. And then hi Mike at my long arm. And then I'm just going to press open. Oh, and then I'm going to get rid of the sewing machine. Sorry. And here, this kind of just turned. I'm just going to leave it. It probably wouldn't have done that if I had actually ironed between. I just didn't feel like it. And when I'm ironing, I try to be pretty gentle and just not rock the iron. Oh my gosh, I love this block. So I'm gonna do something fun with this block. I don't know what, I can make a project bag. I can make a pillow. Um, I don't know what else I could do, but I'll do something fun with it. I'll just um, see what I come up with after I get home from vacation. Now for the edges of this, I'm going to just trim the little slivers off. Should be pretty straight. Not much should come off because this is a straight. This one, nothing should come off because it's a straight line. So there's our block. It is called Inspire. It's by Lori Holt. And so cute. I'll show you next to my other blocks. They're all red. Imagine that. So cute. So let me know. I'm going to answer any questions that you guys have on anything to do with socialites. I do want to show you some other stuff that I came up with this weekend. So if you look, I have all these three inch blocks and I need to make them into something, but I don't, I need another quilt. Like I need another hole in my head. Like I just don't need another quilt. So I decided to make, I just put two of them into pin cushions. Now, my work is not great because I'm not great at making pin cushions, but I'm going to tell you what I did. And I'll probably do these also. These are my other ones that I didn't do. <coughs> so let's see. Okay, so there's two different ones. And I thought I could store it in this little bucket that I keep these pin cushions in. And these are uh, pin cushions from a video we released in 2016 with Sherry McConnell. It's just called Sherry's Pin Cushion. And it's a way to use the little ribbon that you get with your fat quarter purchases. And it's just a cute little pin cushion. And I have these in my sewing room. So I thought, well, I could add this here, like all my other ones that I'm gonna make, or I could add it over here with my Dobo balls that we just did a video on. So there's two videos on how to do both of these. So, super cute. And this is just a little thing from Hobby Lobby. 
So I tried two different things and I'm gonna kind of give you my review. And just, I mean, that's it's, it's not perfect because I'm not a pin cushion person. So I used the instructions to make these. From the instructions that are in the Scrapbook of Quilts book that's coming out in July from Carrie Nelson and Joanna Figueroa. And so I have the top quilted and the back quilted. And this is just fabric from my stash that I found. So Carrie in the book recommends using 80 weight to quilt. So I did that and it looks great, but I could not get the tension on my machine to not break the thread. So my thread just kept breaking like crazy. So on this one, I used 50 weight thread. So you can kind of see that if we zoom in a little bit on the stitching, you can kind of see that this one's a little bit more obnoxious because the thread is so thick. So I agree with Carrie that this thread looks much better and it doesn't distract or take away from, I just couldn't get my tension to cooperate. And I even quilted the back and you can see this, you can't even see the quilting and then here it's kind of obnoxious looking. And when I did this, I just used, these are the bowls I use for everything in my house. I just used, my kids are probably looking for their measuring spoon. I just used these walnut shells to fill this with. Now I'm not gonna use these as real pin cushions. I'm gonna use them as decoration in my house. So that's what I did, it was fun. That's something you could do with your socialites blocks if you've made three inch, if you don't wanna make a full quilt. And I used um, the clover um, little, what is it called? The clover, um, it's like a point turner, but I didn't do a very good job on my points. I mean, you can see they're kind of, they're not very pretty. So I'm not the best at pin cushions, but that's what I did. So I thought that would be fun to show you. And yeah, I'll show you from the front camera, this one. So this is just sitting in my little, um, like my little uh, bookshelf, but then I thought some of these would be cute in there because they're different colors. So I'll probably put the colored ones here and then I'll probably put my gray ones here because these are more like Americana. So this will probably go in my living room and then these will probably go in my sewing room. And this little bucket is from Magnolia, just got it like five years ago and this is like $5 at Hobby Lobby or something. Since we're almost through with social lights, what block has been the most challenging and where did you get stuck? That would be great to know. I need a low volume tone on tone background for Tula's homemade. Any suggestions? Um, she does have Tula pink true colors. I would look through that to see, maybe. She does also use some of the free spirit solids. I may, I might make the three inch squares into catnip toys for shelter cats. Oh, that'd be fun. Following Kimberly's recommendations, my blocks are neat and tidy. Yay. Will there be anything for floss tube next week or will you be away the whole week? I will be gone the whole week. How is everyone? The machine block is adorable. Yay. Hi, Gina. Is it okay to see your seams open is it okay to sew your seams open for all the seams or you, do, you, do you do it for only certain ones? So we're doing it for socialites because when in our setting, a lot of our blocks touch, I just I decide on a case by case or quilt by quilt basis what I'm going to do. So would you not use walnut shells in a pin cushion you're using with pins? Okay, that's a good point. So let me find it. There's two different chains of thought with that. Let me find my pens. Um, I'm going to grab my pens real quick and I'll show you. So I've heard two different things and I can't tell you which is correct because I have no idea. So some people say when you put the pins in that the walnut shells in here sharpen the edge of your pin. And some people say that it dulls your pin. 
So the reason I was saying that I'm not going to use mine is because I don't know um, what it does. And I just use these magnetic pin bowls. So I just wanted to kind of give a, like, you know, I'm not going to really use them. So if you're going to really use them, I'm not sure what to use because everyone has kind of a different opinion on that. Will the videos for socialites be available for a while? Yes, we're going to leave them online forever. Kimberly, I'll be showing all of my socialite blocks that I have sewn on my tutorial tomorrow. Yes, so Lori Holt's channel, check it out on Friday, and she's going to show you all of the socialite blocks that she did. And I did mine two-toned, and she's got hers with lots of colors. So it'll give you kind of an idea of how you can do yours totally different than mine. The Cory Yoder with the heart in the middle was the hardest block. It took me four times. Aw. The last block was crazy hard, and I was shocked it turned out okay. Yes, I agree. Now that 2020 Mystery Quilt is finished, are you going to show the finished quilt? Yes, we have it scheduled for two Fridays from now. That way it will give everybody time to have received most of their blocks, and I'll show you the quilt, and then I'll get to take it home because I actually made it. If there is a fabric line you love but don't know what to make, how much would, how much would you buy? I would buy a layer cake or two layer cakes, and then I would buy like four or five yards of a background. What size do we need for the six and a half inch half square triangle in order to make two out of one square? If it's unfinished, you need to cut a six and seven eighth inch square. If it's finished, you would need to have a seven and three eighths inch square. Do you know anything about the revised instructions for our flag stands for freedom? Yes, I do. So the instructions are actually technically correct. I don't think there's a mistake in it. It was just confusing because the instructions were for both the small and the big. I followed up with Lisa Bonjean yesterday. She's making a PDF that will be on her website. Once she emails me the PDF is up, we're going to email every customer who bought either the kit or the pattern with that link. We're just waiting for the updated instructions. And I've seen several people have actually already made it, so I know that it can be made because I've seen people make it. Will you be getting apricot and ash fabric in again? No, that is completely discontinued and um, it actually went into reprint once already, so I know that that one won't be available. What quilt is behind you or can I watch from the beginning to find out? The quilt behind me is the Shine On book from The Quilt Bee Book by Bonnie and Camille. Did you figure out which grunge will work? Yes, we're gonna show that in an upcoming segment. Are you really going on vacation? Yeah, I'm really going on vacation. I'm going to Yellowstone and somewhere else. Um, where am I going? I'm going to Crime Con next weekend. That's where I will be all by myself. It's gonna be amazing. Um, but we're going to Yellowstone and then we're going to some town in Wyoming. I don't know. Kevin planned it. I just show up and go. Um, but yeah, I'm really going on vacation and my kids are going and I think they're gonna have fun. Kimberly, sew all of your three inch blocks around my nine inch sewing machine blocks. I know, but they won't match. I'll have to make new ones. I missed the beginning and you didn't say what clear glue is. I like the fine dots. Is it acorn? Yes, the clear glue is acorn. Could you tell us all the block of the month's Fat Quarter Shop is offering and all the blocks you're doing yourself? So all the blocks that I'm doing online, you would just have to look on our block of the month page. Now, if I'm sewing it, once it comes out, I will say, yes, I'm sewing it. So all that information we just keep within the live stream so that you watch. So I'm gonna move to the next section. which is serendipity, and I'm gonna sit down. So last week, hold on a second. Last Monday, not this Monday, but the Monday before, I did a demonstration on socialites on how to make this block, and I got everything sewn into a row and just wanted to show you that. This fabric is Spring Brook, by Corey Yoder. This is Thatched by Robin Pickens. Now this is row five. When I'm on vacation on June 1st, row six will come out. And row six is Flying Geese. 
And what I'm going to do on the video June 7th, that's the Monday I get back, it's gonna be a live stream for Socialites. I've already sewn all of my flying geese together because last time I showed you how to sew the flying geese together. And on the video on June 7th, which is our serendipity live stream, I will show you how to put all your blocks together into a row and how I kind of do a row. And we have raised $76,599 so far. The quilt is gonna finish at 64 by 74. And we have two rows left. Row six is flying geese. Row seven are quilt blocks. And then we will also have a pieced backing tutorial. I'm going to do the sew along of shine on. Okay, let's go to the front camera. Is the Happy Days back quarter due soon? It's delayed until June, so no, it's not soon. Everything is delayed, so it's just um, the world. So everything is just delayed. I would just assume everything is coming a month later, and if it comes early, it's kind of a bonus. I'm doing the sew along of Shine On. Can I start to sew blocks together or wait? Oh, you can do whatever. Yeah, I would sew them together. Did you get in Lori Holt's red fabric with the little bees on it and the red check fabric? The little bees, I don't know off the top of my head, I'd have to look, but the red check fabric is supposed to arrive in the next week and I bought all of it, so it should be coming soon. I know that one, the bee, I don't know off the top of my head. If I sign up for the row by row, do I get charged the first three months all at once? Yes. Do you sell Riley Blake? Yes. And will you be getting Miss Kogut's new fabric line? Yes, I'm actually the one who recommended that Riley Blake put it into fabric. So yes, I'm getting the fabric. So now, um, last week if you watched, you saw that we did a fun photo shoot with the brand new flea market book by Lori Holt. And we were able to show you lots of pictures from the photo shoot. And now I am going to actually show you what's in the book. And I'm gonna start with the table runners just because they're smaller. This is called the Churn Dash Runner. Gina Tell of Thread Graffiti both, I'm gonna kinda of start on this side. She pieced it and she quilted it. And she put the Riley trim in here. Large vintage trim by Lori Holt. And this is the backing. So this backing is 108 inch wide. And so you can use 108 inch wide on the back of, even if it's not a wide item. So you can use it on table runner and you can also use these 108s on the front of your quilts. And this is, I'm just gonna kind of show everything, but this is the cover of the book. Now it's gonna come looking much nicer. This is just how we proof the book. And the book has three table runners and I'm just gonna do it kind of slow so you can see, oh my gosh, I wanna make this one so bad and then I'll show you the back. And on these, um, Gina remembers what she quilted these in if you want them quilted the same way. And we will have kits for all of these. The quilt is coming, the book is coming in July. So the book will, the kits will come out after that. This one is called the Primrose Runner. Nancy made this one and Gina quilted it, a thread graffiti. And let me see, Nancy has worked for me for 15 years. Let me think, how old is Emma? Now she's probably worked for me for 16 years. I love this one. And this is her B cross stitch fabric. I was trying to think of the word. And then this is obviously her flea market fabric. And this is the vintage trim, the large size. It's so pretty and it's super long. And then I'll show you the backing too. I was trying to match my shirt with her fabric a little bit. It didn't really work, but I tried. So this is her backing. This is cute. The next table runner I have is called Flea Market Star. And I love this one too. Nancy also made this one and Gina quilted it. 
And I love the look of this, the border, the binding, and the rickrack. Because to me, it just kind of blends together. And this is one of my favorite fabrics from that collection, and I'm using it a lot in her red sampler blocks. And this one has four blocks. So this is all in the flea market book by Lori Holt, coming out in July, published by It's So Emma. So pretty. And on this one, we're selling a kit that goes, we're gonna sell all of the kits, but the big kit I'm gonna actually, for the person who was asking if I'm gonna sew along, I'm gonna sew along on that one, which is this one. And it's huge and it's gonna, I'm gonna put it on the table and then hold it. So Terry and Deborah made this as a team and Mike at my long arm quilted it. It's very big, but I prefer to unwrap it on the table first. I hit myself in the head, sorry. I just hit my head, I just hit myself in the head with my necklace and it hurt, sorry. Okay, ow, <laughs> I keep doing it. Okay, pull that side. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of pull it and then we'll, then I'll hold it up. But the book has, bas it has these blocks, which were in that table runner, basket blocks. They are set where you don't have to match points. This is the medallion in the center. I just want you to really see it up close and see Mike's quilting too. And then these are the churn dashes that were in that table runner. I really did hit myself and hurt myself. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have a big knot on my head. And here's the baskets. And then this one, I also love the border because it's it's got the cloud vintage trim peeking out of the sea glass. And now I'm gonna hold it. Now this quilt is huge. I can tell you the size in a little bit, but it is huge. It's, I think it's 97 inches square. And then I'll show you kind of the next part. Yeah, you can see. It's so pretty. So I am gonna sew this entire quilt. And what we're gonna do is we'll have a sew along where we break it up into different weeks. We're selling it as a kit, but then we're gonna just break it up. Now we haven't decided dates on that or how we're gonna break it up. We're gonna work with Lori and Lori and I we can decide. Now, obviously we'll probably do one or two baskets a week. We'll probably do churn dashes at the same time, the big star in the center at once, and probably break this up into a little bit so it's actually achievable, but I'm gonna sew this one. And I won't change the fabrics at all. I'll keep it exactly how Lori has it and I'll even do the same backing. Do you have the flea market book as a PDF? No, we don't offer the books as a PDF. Okay, and then now I'm going to show you the pillows. Now all of the pillows are from the basket blocks within the quilt. There's 12 of them. So you basically, from the front of the quilt, you change out the basket block the setting fabric, the border, and the binding. And instructions are in the book on how to make the pillows. And thank you to all of our sample makers who made all of these. So you can kind of pick the one that you like. This is my favorite one right here. And we, okay, so what we did with these pillows is Lori likes her pillows. Okay, we'll do the front camera real quick. 
Lori likes her pillows filled. She does not like light pillows. So her pillows, she usually puts a two inch size bigger pillow in it. So she likes it like this, but you can get a smaller pillow form. That's also just personal preference. And of course, in the book, we list um, close up pictures so that you can see. And she used different backgrounds from her background collection that will stay around. And so you can see this, I think is a, that might be a backing fabric that she put on the front. So you don't always have to use 108 just for the back. What batting did we use for the quilts? We used 8020 Quilter's Dream. Is the book included in the kit or separate? I believe it is separate. We'll look in a second, but I think it's separate, but I honestly can't remember. So lots of color options. I'm getting a workout, y'all. <laughs> but the best thing about this design is they float. Your baskets float. So you don't have to worry about getting this to match this. Lots of pillows. Is this binding or piping on the pillows? It's binding. And you could, if you wanted, you could put vintage trim in here. It might be a lot just because you've got so many colors on the front. And then that is the book, it's amazing. And I'm gonna answer all the questions that you guys have asked. So the book on the front, I'm pretty sure I know the size, I just wanna say it right. Yep, 96 inches square. I was gonna say 97, so I was close. The front is 96 inches square. I'm gonna make the whole thing. Now, I'm not gonna do videos with tutorials on it. Lori will. But I am going to, we'll do a sew along where we list the dates on our blog. And from there, I will um, sew along and just show you my blocks each week like I always do. The pillows are 20 inches. And the book is sold separately from the quilt kit. And all of the table runners will also be kits. The only thing in the book that won't be a kit is the pillows, but you could probably use leftover fabrics to start your pillows. Are the kit pieces pre-cut? No. Will there be triangle paper for this? You can use triangle paper, so let me look. We can list in here what... Um, triangle paper to use if you want to so I can add that well uh, I'll have to add that after I have to ask Lori permission first actually but there are lots um looks like h250 h200 so I would have to look and see exactly which ones and I have to ask Lori's permission if she wants us to even list that because some people like that and some people don't my envelope opening in the back are usually horizontal is there any reason why you do vertical? Um, no. Can you turn it around? I have no idea. Lori's in the chat. Hey, Lori, let me know. I have no idea the answer. The showing machine you did is from what book? It is a free block on Fat Quarter Shop. Just type socialites and it should be on our What's New page. When will the fabric be in for Bats and Booze? Um, it's late, June, July, super late. Did I understand you're gonna do videos? So I'm not gonna do videos, I'm going to, um, but Lori will, and you will have to have the book to do it, but it's just gonna be where I show you everything I make that week. Because if I showed you tutorials and everything I did, I would never get anything done. How big are the pillows? 20 inches, the edges are binding, the batting is 8020 Quilter's Dream. What is the name of the kit? It's just called Flea Market Kit. As fast as you sew, how do you keep your quarter inch at the end of your small pieces? I never seem to say, stay straight. 
Okay, I've been quilting a long time and I actually am much more accurate the faster I go, which sounds totally counterintuitive, but it's true. If I like sit and sew really slow, it will be totally inaccurate. The faster I sew, the more accurate I am. It's all about the person. So some people, if you sew slower, you're more accurate. So I sew faster because I get more accurate results, but I've been sewing forever. like. So it's just, I think you just have to do what works for you. Like some people use a quarter inch foot with a guide. Some people don't. Lori uses, instead of using a quarter inch foot with a guide, she uses her um, seam line that you put, you tape it down, washi tape it down to the bed of your machine. So whatever works for you, everyone does a different sewing technique. And I say do whatever works for you in your sewing room so that you get the best results for yourself. What do you recommend as a way to keep track of projects? I recommend this little book right here. So I will show you kind of how, what I do. So normally in this book, I would put my phone number, but since we're on video, I don't want you to have my phone number, so I don't put it on there because <laughs> I don't know what y'all text me. So when I start a quilt, that's when it goes in. If it has a check mark, I'm finished. So I've started 24 projects and this has started this year and only eight of them are done. But here I make a note of where I'm at on the blocks. And if I have a big check, that means I'm done. Like here, my favorite color is Moda. I actually haven't updated this. I need to update this. But then when I come like here, I've made five large and nine small. But when I come back to it, I know. And then this is my scrappy quilt for the year. So I'm making sure to put every collection name in it. So in 10 years, if I want to know, I can find it. And then here, this is like the American gatherings we're going to talk about in a little bit. I haven't picked my, I haven't picked my sashing and binding or my backing. And so that's telling me I need to add my skews. This is my dinosaur quilt. So you can see I've got three more dinosaur blocks, but I've got four out of the seven done. So this is what I use and it's called the quilting journal and it goes everywhere with me and so does my cross stitch journal. They go everywhere with me. I also use spreadsheets and I also use a tablet called the Remarkable and on that before I go home on the weekend I write out everything I need to get done and I just kind of, one thing that actually will really help you is if you have a lot on your list. Pick four things that are easy, whip them out. Guess what, now you only have six. You feel like you've accomplished more. So mix in your easy with your hard, with your easy with your hard, so that it will help you get a more accomplished. Will Lori Holt's Happy Place quilt be made into a cross stitch? Yes. Is there news on Starry Skies quilt kit and who is hosting it? Can you go to the website real quick? I have no idea, let me think, Starry Skies. Okay, that one, I think there was a newsletter sent out yesterday by, okay, Starry Skies Quilt, Starry Skies Quilt Kit by Summer Breeze. I don't think that's a sew along. The Starry Sky, Skies Pattern by Then Came June would be hosted by her. So I actually don't know the answer to that. I'm not familiar, but if there is a sew along with Starry Skies, then came June. I'm sure then Cam June is hosting it. She has a great blog, she has a great Instagram, and she does a newsletter where she kind of keeps you up to date with her sew alongs. Is the reservation fee extra or going towards the purchase of the book? You pay the reservation fee, and then you pay for the remainder of the book later it doesn't get deducted, but we calculate all of that in. I know you don't do a scant quarter inch, but you can, can you explain what that is? So it just means that instead of sewing at the quarter inch, you sew a little bit to the right. So let me find a piece and I can show you. Okay, so we'll do the front camera. Can I have a, oh here, okay. So this is just a block. And if you put my ruler on there, that's a quarter inch. So I've stitched right there. Now a scant quarter inch would be where you stitch more over here. And you have 
So you stitch a little bit to the right. So I stitch right at the quarter inch. Some people do a scant, which means slightly to the right. So that's what it technically is. When is so sampler shipping? I don't know. We did send a newsletter, so refer to your newsletter. Um, I know that two months are delayed. Kimberly, do you get a nest when you cut on your juki? No. You know when you start after the cut? No, and I don't start with leaders or ender, enders. I don't get a nest either. What is the binding fabric on this runner? All of the binding fabrics, every fabric collection used in there is from the Prim collection mixed with a couple of B backgrounds and the book will list the SKUs. When you are putting borders on a quilt, do you put the sides on first and then the top and bottom or do you reverse? I usually do the sides first and then the top and bottom. When the backing for when the backing fabric requirements show, does that mean it is the amount it includes for a long armor? Depends whose pattern you buy. If it's one of our patterns, that's got plenty. We always calculate five inches all the way around the entire perimeter. Unless it's a table runner, we might do a little bit less. Since Texas is reopening, will you start having designers as guests? Yes, we will. We haven't found any designers that are willing to travel yet, though. So it's more about when people are more comfortable. When will smoke and rust be shipped? June, July. I think June, if my guess. I think June. Where is Crime Con? It is in Austin this year. It's always somewhere different. Three years ago, I went to it in Nashville. And um, yeah. There is a notify me button for Lori's flea market. Is it sold out or not available yet? It's not available yet. So just click a notify and when it comes in, we'll notify you. Oh, hi, Stitching with the Sisterlies. Is Lori Holt stitch fabric due anytime soon? July. Okay, so now I'm gonna move to another Lori Holt item. It is the red sampler blocks. So I'll show you her blocks first. Okay, so we're gonna pop up her blocks real quick and we'll compare them to mine. Oh, I have them in the right order. Ooh, I got lucky. Okay, so on the left is Starry Nights, page 126 of Farm Girl Vintage 2. The center is quilting, is cross stitch from Farm Girl Vintage 2, and the block on the right is quilting day. Now these are six inch versions cut from the 12 inch size. So if you look in the book, I'm gonna try to find it real quick. I'm trying to find one of them on the cover, okay. So if you look at the book right here, this right here is a fourth of this 12 inch. The same thing with this one. This is the six inch version, so it's just a fourth of the 12 inch. And then the same thing with the cross hatch, which is right here, so it's a fourth of it. And I was really happy that she did six inch this week so that it would be a lot easier. So I kept these fabrics the same. This fabric, I think I had to change the inside to different and then this one I kept similar. So we can like flash to hers real quick and then flash back to mine just to see the difference. So see, yeah, I kept this one the same. Yeah, so I kept it kind of the same. And then, so that's week seven. These were from week five, and I wasn't happy with them. So what I did on this one is I ripped out the center square and replaced it. And you can't even tell, luckily, somehow. And this one, I ripped out all four half square triangles and sewed it back in. Now you can see how messy this is because you can tell I really kind of, I should have just remade the block. I'm still not 100% happy with this block but I think I need to let it go. 
Now, when I come back in two Fridays, I will have two weeks worth of red sampler blocks. So I'll have six blocks. Another Lori item that just shipped is pretty similar to what we did at the start of the show, which was our socialites block. And if you're in the Sew by Row block of the month, this is actually shipping to you today. So I've made my three blocks. And Lori handpicked all of these fabrics from her collections. And then I have my sashing already cut. And when you come back in two weeks, I will have it sewn into a row. Sorry about hitting that, that was me. And when you get your block of the month, it will tell you what's included and what to cut on each page. So it makes it super easy. And then I'm gonna answer any questions now and then move on. Do you have that houndstooth material or will you be getting it in? Okay, can I see the red blocks that I just showed and I will tell you the answer to both of those okay this fabric right here that's the gingham should be coming in any day this one is in stitch which is coming out in July so I just have it a little bit early when using reds do you pre-wash no, I just starch. Do you prefer straight or mitered borders? <laughs> straight. I do have a really good video on mitered borders though. Is there a tutorial on how to rip out and re-sew a center block? Uh, no, there's not, but maybe I can do that when I need to do that again. If I need to contact someone about an order, how do I do it? You email service at fatquartershop.com. So now I'm gonna move on to our Jolly Bar Sew Along, which just ended. And I'm gonna just pull these out so that they're all here and easy for me to get to. And I'm gonna show you all of the quilts that are finished. So this was a sew along where we took the Jolly Bar book three. A Jolly Bar is a five by 10 inch set of 42 rectangles. And you're gonna get to see a lot of quilts that we made by combining different blocks from the book. I'm gonna first start with mine, which I love. I'm sorry, but I just love mine. So I'm gonna turn it around. So the quilting on this was done by Gina Tell, and I love it. This is probably my favorite pantograph and I used Sunday Stroll. I'm not sure where I'm going to put the table runner. And if you just pay attention to the where the blocks are, you will see that some people did theirs differently. So that's all the way to the edge. And then the back, We have gotten a lot of questions over the year of how I do my pieced backings. So we actually incorporated this in the pattern. And in the center of the square, I put a label from Sweetwater Label Company and I sewed it in and just made it bigger and then trimmed it down. And so that is mine and I love the quilting. I love it, love it, love it, it's so amazing. So that's my quilt. My table runner, I guess. The next one is using the Roslyn collection by Three Sisters. Deborah made it and Gina quilted it. So I'm gonna show it. It's easier for me to show this way. So this one, she didn't change any of the placement. She just did the pattern just like it's called for. On mine, I did make both of my houses go the same direction though. That's the one change that I did make. And so one thing you can see is everyone prefers different quilting. So this is a lot bigger quilting than mine. Mine is super tiny. And I prefer my quilting to be super, super, super tiny. 
So that's the front of Deborah's. And this is a background from the Rosalind collection. And then this is her backing. And so you can see that hers just has a center square. I just made mine have a name tag in it. So that's the Roslyn. The next one is from the Spring Chicken Collection. Lori made this one. And this is Sweetwater fabric. And you can see her quilting is super big. So everyone does a different, when you send it to your long arm quilter, just make sure you specify if you want, you know, big quilting, medium quilting. This is cute. And this fabric right here is the background from that collection, Spring Chicken by Sweetwater. And she did a really fat binding. I'm not sure how she did it, but her binding is, is, um, is pretty wide, which looks good. It's uh, three quarter inches on the front and three quarter inches on the back. It looks good. And then I'll show you her back. This one looks really good because she like incorporated the this fabric into the block. And this is just where I had my label. The next one that our sample makers made is the Sophie Collection by Brenda Riddle. And Sue made this one and Gina Tell quilted it. This background color is Bella Solid Color 83. I like this little house. And this is Brenda Riddle fabric. And anything y'all want to see up close, just tell me and we can reshow. And this is the accent fabric. And then I'll show you the back. This pink is really pretty on the back. So this one, she incorporated part of the backing and then changed this. And that background is 9900 color 83. And then our last sample maker is from the Rust, Smoke and Rust collection. Gina made this one and she quilted it. Now, if you look, Gina's, she has a different layout. Like this was the backing label on another one and she put it here and she put all of the information on how she changed her table runner on her blog and on Facebook and that is called Thread Graffiti. So she pieced it and she quilted it and she did a geometric. And this is Smoke and Rust by Layla Boutique. And this background right here is from the collection. It's a little um, crosshatch. It's like little X's. And this is really nice and manly. And that's cute, look. Okay, so she fussy cut that. Not all who wonder are lost. She fussy cut that. And she fussy cut, be brave, take a hike. So lots of fun stuff you can do with doors. And changing the layout and changing the blocks. And then I'll show you the back. Her back is much different. It's pretty big. So she did, oh, I'm gonna kind of go sideways, but um, this is from the collection. And so some of the blocks that were on the front, she put on the back. Some of the ones from the back, she put on the front. And all of this is on um, her social media. And this is um, her logo for her company. And I don't know where she gets this made. I'm not sure if she makes these or if she gets them made. And then we have three more table runners. These are from people outside the company. So this one is by Pat Sloan. This fabric is called Kitty, Kitty, like kitty cat corn. 
and she did her square. So I'm gonna show it. This is Urban Chicks fabric. And they're cute little kitty cats. And she is going to show how she did hers on her YouTube channel and on her social media. And she's easy to find. She has lots of Facebook groups and a YouTube channel. And this black right here is Bella 99. So 99, 9900-99. And then I'm gonna hold it up so you can get the full effect of. So it's rectangular and wider. So that is from Pat Sloan. And I love how people are doing different things with all of them so that you can make it your own. So anytime we're hosting a sew along, feel free to use your creativity to come up with your own. And this is Kitty Fabric by Urban Chicks for Moda. It's not in stock yet. The next quilt is from Patty Dudix at Elm Street Quilts. And you can find her on social media. So she also did her square. I'll show it to you up here and then I'll show you the back and then I'll show you in the front. This is Quotation Fabric by Zen Chic, and this is Much Smaller House. I think it looks smaller. And then I'll show you the back. So she changed some of the sizes of her blocks because her blocks are much smaller. This is the front. And the back. And it looks like her blocks are smaller. So you can definitely check her out and we will have links to her also. So pretty. And then the next one is from Blue Grass Stitches. I'm gonna do it the same way I did the others. This fabric is America the Beautiful by Deb Strain by Moda. It's Mona Phelps of Blue Cross Stitches. And so this is another way you can accessorize your quilt is using a darker thread that makes it pop out. So I'll show you the front and the back of this one. This fabric is, um, it in person it looks like shiplap. So it's pretty fitting to be on the house. And she's got stars and like it kind of you know she fussy cut that so she's got the the panograph here matches the the quilt and then the back she just did a normal back and then what she did here is this is it says handcrafted by Mona bluegrass stitches oh sorry Handcrafted by Mona, bluegrassstitches.com, and then it says bluegrass, bluegrass stitches, and then that's sewn into her binding. So you could have these made. I don't, I don't know a name of a company that does those off the top of my head, but you could Google quilt labels. And then that is our Jolly Bar 3 Sew Along. I'm going to answer questions and then move to the other stuff I worked on. When did you start the row by row? three months ago, and if you still want to sign up, I think we have a couple spots left. It's called Sew by Row, and uh, if you sign up, you'll get month one through three. Is this book all table runners? No. The book is, I can show you, it's quilts. This is a summary of the different blocks in the quilts. And I'm, they're all quilts. We took it, took blocks 
from the book, put it into a table runner so that if you are somebody who wants to try the book, but obviously you don't want to make all of all 20 quilts, it's a way to just pick and choose from the book. What is the background fabric you're using for the Lori Holt red blocks? I am using different reds from B Basics and Farm Girl Vintage. Are you going to sew all of the buttons on the sewing machines? No. If I do, it will be after quilting. I actually haven't even thought through the embroidery or anything. I'll have to, if I do embroidery, I'll probably have Cassidy, which is Lori's daughter, do it. Kimberly, why do you like to sew with your Juki? So I like that it's fast. I like that I don't have to use a starter and an ender. It just goes. I don't, and it doesn't um, create, it's just fast. It doesn't come unthreaded once you have the tension right and I can just be efficient with it. Can you pro provide a list of the different fabric collections? So what I do in the live stream is I try to say them. If you have questions about a specific quilt, just put it in the comments and we'll answer it. Can I use triangle paper for the Sophie Jolly Bar free pattern? What sizes? Email nova at fatquartershop.com and she will answer because I don't remember. If we join row by row, do we get a catch up shipment or start at the beginning? You get all three of the first ones. Do you put table runners on your dining table or where? I hurt someone if they spill food on them. Okay, I use my table runners and I hang them off of either like a side table or put them in buckets or I hang them off of my fireplaces. I do not put them where my kids can put anything on them because they will ruin them. So I have a lot hanging off of fireplaces. Can you hold up the runner you made? Yes. Okay, let me get it the right way. Which way is my houses? Okay. So I turn my houses to go the same way. So this will probably hang off a fireplace. And so what you can do is just like fold it up, put something super heavy on it and it'll hang down. And that's mainly what I do. Um, and my kids know, like, they're, if the quilt is on the back of a couch, that means don't use it. But they have a huge stack of ones they know they can use. So my quilts, some get used, some don't. It just kind of depends. How can we find out what Gina and Mike charge for quilting services? So I'm going to give you both of their websites, and their websites have their emails, and you can email them. Mylongarm.com is Mike. Thread Graffiti on Facebook, or you, or I can look up her URL, and that is Gina Till. Did you use triangles on a roll? I always use triangles on a roll. Do you cover your sewing machines when you're not using them? No, I don't, but I use my sewing machine a lot. Online chat is great for help with order questions. Very fast and helpful. Thank you. I'll tell Kevin. I just want to shout out to your customer service, super communicative, super communicative about all the club delays, and I appreciate how hard you work for us. Thank you. We really do try. We really do try. Have you ever tried to scotch guard a quilt? No, I haven't. I have used that on my carpet and chairs. <laughs> do you square before you long arm? No, I, um, I don't. Is there a correction for sew by row book? No. Do you take a machine and supplies with you on vacation? When I go on vacation next week, I'll take cross stitch. I won't take any quilting. And if I go on vacation to sew, I go to Lori's house and guess what? Lori has my rotary cutter, she has my starch, and she has my sewing machine there so I don't have to take it. So that's awesome. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you the laundry basket quilt sew along that I had shown you last week. And I have them in these little buckets. So these are the blocks I showed you last week. She had, it's all finished now. There are 12 different blocks and finishing for free on the Laundry Basket Quilt blog. I, all of her blocks are four inches finished. And that just wasn't challenging enough for me. So I made mine two inches finished. 
And I'll tell you the fabrics that I used because we did have that question earlier. I am using C745 Cottage and C747 Cottage for these two fabrics. So these are the ones I showed you last week. So some of them you make a few of, some of them you make more, all the information, all of this is completely free. I just made mine smaller because I'm special like that. I like to do hard things. And I am pressing everything open. And on these, I just use all the techniques. Like we use this technique to do a cat's cradle several time on the channel. I use that same technique. And let's see, it's supposed to be 68 inches. So when I finish mine, it'll be 34 inches. And on this one, I haven't finished all of these yet, but I have all my half square triangles done. So I did one inch paper on this and my son cut them all out and, I'm not cut them all out. He um, pulled all the paper. So, and then I have my two inch, square and a square to do and I'll be done. And then I'm going to just cut the finish, cut the setting squares. I'm just gonna use the same background. I have not decided if I'm going to do a border around it or not. And if I do a border, if I will do background or dark. So what my plan is, is when I get back from vacation, I'll sew it all together. Once I sew it together, I'll make a decision on border, backing, all of that. So that is my progress on that free sew along. Where did I get my buckets? Target, Target. They are in like, you just walk by, they're super cheap. And they have aqua also. And this is actually the batting that I used when I made my pin cushions, I forgot to show you. The next question is, what starch do I use? This is the starch I use. I will say that I'm gonna maybe move to the heavy because the last couple, the last couple of blocks I made are not stiff enough. How did I figure out how to cut them down? Years and years of experience. Years and years and years of experience. So the next thing I wanna share with you, I'm very excited about. This is Winter Wonderland book. Now this came out years ago from Joanna Figueroa Direct using different fabrics as a block of the month that you could subscribe to. Now she has turned it into a book that you can buy either the pattern separately, but what we did is we colored this in the Pumpkins and Blossoms fabric by Joanna. That fabric collection will ship in late June. Pat Sloan came up with this idea and she is gonna give you all of the details on her YouTube channel and on her Facebook. You can find Pat Sloan, just Google her. She's super famous, you'll find her anywhere. So we're gonna have a kit for this. It's gonna be called the Autumn Wonderland Quilt Along. And we colored it in pumpkins and blossoms, so it's more of a fall look rather than Christmas. I mean, this is kind of Christmassy, right? And, the, and I did actually make this from Joanna's Block of the Month. I'm gonna make this one too. So what you get when you buy our kit is you get the book and it's a kit, it's not a block of the month. We're gonna sew it as a block of the month, but it's a kit. So you get the book from Joanna and you get exactly what color you need for each block so that you can actually make it into this and not have to guess what fabric goes where. So you'll get this in your kit and I'm happy to show you all of the blocks because Nova sewed them. So Nova has all of these sewn up and um, she's gonna sew them into the quilt now. So I'll just show you. She used uh, color 2000 probably for this. And this is a cross weave that we're using. And 
when Pat does the sew along, she's just gonna go in the order of the booklet and she'll give you a schedule of what she's doing and I'll just be sewing along with her. So I'm gonna make this. As soon as the fabric comes, I'll make this also. So these are Nova's blocks and I'm sure if she puts buttons on here, she'll do it after it's quilted. I'm not sure if Mike or Gina are gonna quilt this for her. But we wanted to just show you the blocks so you could see how pretty they are. I really like this black because to me this is, um, it's a little bit lighter and I, I prefer that. And when she gets this all quilted into a quilt, of course I'll show you and I'll show you the blocks as I make them. And I could actually bring in the blocks that I made using the Christmas Figs fabric um, that I made using it with a Joanna's because I do shop other places besides Fat Quarter Shop. So I did the block of the month with Joanna years ago when it was in paper form, not in booklet form. And these are dear, so pretty. Okay, look at look at Nova's blocks. They're perfect. Oh my goodness. I love it. So pretty. This is like heaven touching these blocks. Is this gray or blue from the background? It's gray. It's black, really. The SKU number is 12119-53. Is it already sold out? Nope, it hasn't arrived yet. So what you do is you click to be notified on the kit and when it comes in and we cut the kits, we will sell them. The fabric has not arrived, it will not arrive until July. This is a little gnome. And I'm not a fan of gnomes, but I'll, I'll make it anyway because it is kind of a cute gnome. I'll just call it a man, a bearded man. What is the background on Nova's blocks? 12119-53, it's a cross weave. Will, the, will there be tutorials? I don't know, Pat Sloan is hosting it, so you can ask Pat. I'm not gonna do a tutorial because it's not my pattern, um, but I can definitely give you tips and tell you um, if I, you know, if I use glue or if I use triangles on a roll, I can always give tips. And anytime I'm doing any of these blocks, anytime you have a question on how I did something, if it's an easy answer, I'll definitely tell you. If it's really complicated, I'm, I'm, I can do my best to answer. Like the question about how did I know how to figure out how to cut them down, that's not an easy answer just because I just tried to make it really difficult for myself. That one's not as easy to answer. Oh my gosh, this quilt is gonna be beautiful. Her blocks are perfect. Oh, I wanna take them. I wanna take them home and hug them. And there's a little mushroom. Oh, so cute. I don't even like mushrooms. Why? And I like this. I don't even like mushrooms. And I think she did use our paper because there is no way she could have got these this perfect without our paper. And we're happy that Pat Sloan is um, doing this so along so that I can just participate. Sometimes it's fun to just participate and have other people host the so along and have to deal with all the details. And again, this is the book. I'm just getting stuff ready for the next part. And I'm going to um, answer questions and then I'll move to the next section because I do have some kind of big updates. Would you consider the kit advanced or intermediate? I would say somewhere in the middle. I think all the techniques are intermediate. I think sewing that whole thing together as a whole is advanced because there's so much movement in the sashing, but it's 
a lot of corner squares. And if you can master a corner square, you can do that quilt. Will you offer any different colorways? No, we're just doing that one colorway. Now you can buy the pattern and you can look at the fabric requirements and put together, but we're only doing one kit. How much background fabric needs to be ordered? I will look at the pattern and see. I don't know off the top of my head. Let me see. Okay. Eight red fat quarters, eight green fat quarters, eight ivory fat quarters, or you can just buy the Christmas figs to fat quarter bundle, which we still have in stock if you want to do a Christmas one. Three to four topes, a quarter yards each, a quarter yard of red solid, three and a half yards charcoal, which is the background, and three and three eighths yard backing and half a yard binding. So if it was me, I would buy five yards of charcoal just to have enough. Thank you for teaching the use of triangle paper. I tried it and what a difference it makes. Thank you. Will you, do, will you be doing a quilt or table runner with Farmhouse Christmas by Riley Blake? I don't have anything planned on that one. What is a good tone on tone to use as background fabric? We just did a blog post on that, I think, yes? No, we did an Instagram post on that. There's an Instagram post from two weeks ago that tells you my three favorite of white on whites. So just go on Instagram and look up Fat Quarter Shop. Is the quilt along for June still going to start in June? Which one? Probably not. Just we're, um, this sew along, yes, I'm gonna talk about. Depends which sew along. Will you sell a kit without book for those of us who have made it? I don't know. We'll ha you'll have to email service at backquartershop.com. Is this background the Bella Solids Crossweave in black and white? It's 12119-53, so it's a crossweave, not a Bella Solid. Do you have just the book for sale? Yes. Are gnomes like your chickens? I'm not like, I don't like gnomes or chickens or any of that. Round applause for Nova, yay! I was wondering if I could use any of Lori's fabrics for any of the So Simple Shape quilts. You can use Lori's fabrics for anything. You can use anybody's fabrics for anybody's. You can mix Lori's fabric with Joanna pattern, Joanna fabric with the Lori pattern. You can do whatever you want. So I am going to move to American Quilt Quilter Sew Along. This is going to be hosted by Lisa Bonji. So I'm going to try to explain it to the best of my ability but Lisa Bonjean is hosting it, and if you have any questions, I am happy to help you with piecing or tips within each block, but she's hosting it. It is a fundraiser for Hogs for Heroes, and you can read her blog for more information. She's at primitivegatherings.us. We did donate $750 to that fundraiser. There will be 20 flag blocks, they will be completely free on her blog. She is going to start this in June, 2021. The quilt will finish about 70 by 80. Now the block patterns are free. To make the quilt in the setting that she, I'm gonna peek and show you. To make the quilt in the setting, you do need this book, which is called American Gatherings that you can get at Fat Quarter Shop. And your setting instructions are in the book. If you pre-ordered a fat quarter bundle from us, we are shipping that out today through next Tuesday. I would say Monday, but Monday's a holiday. So we're going to do our best to get them out by Friday. If it hasn't gone by Friday, it will definitely go by Tuesday. So you will have it in time for the sew along. So she's using the American Gatherings fat quarter bundle. Of course, you can use your scrap, scraps also. And we had a lot of questions on the blues. So I'm gonna go over the blues. Now, what I did on this, she is going to do a video tutorial on how she does the stripes and gets them accurate. Now, Lisa Bonjean uses starch just like I do. So I starch this entire fat quarter bundle. I have made all 20 blocks. Any questions you have, you can ask me. Now I did something super complicated. I made all these stripes bigger and then I cut down and I wasted a lot of time, but my blocks are perfect. The one thing that I did do 
when I made each star, I made the sashing half an inch bigger, dropped a ruler on it, and trimmed it down. So that is how you can get this bigger no matter what, because they all have sashing around them. Now, each week when I come, I will show you which triangle paper I used or which um, flying geese paper or anything that I did. I will give you tips. And my tips might be totally different than Lisa Bond jeans, and that's okay. We're really great friends, and she sews, she can sew accurately without cutting down. So if you can do that, go for it. I just did some funny stuff, but my blocks came out all perfect. So this is one of the blocks. And of course, all the blocks are free. If you buy a fat quarter bundle directly from Lisa, she will donate $10 to Hogs for Heroes. If you bought it from us, I did the same amount. I just came up with 750, so that's gonna be on behalf of Fat Quarter Shop, but she would still like you to donate if you would like. Now for the sashing, I talked to Lisa and she's actually making this quilt four times. And I said, Lisa, are you making the quilt four times or are your employees making the quilt four times? She's making the quilt four times she's gonna give you all kinds of options for the sashing. If you're looking for a blue, the one she recommends let's see, the one she recommends is 1040-42. So this is the one she recommends. Now all of these fabrics I'm showing you are not here. I'm so sorry they're not here. Moda is super delayed. Any of the primitive muslins will be in stock very late June, but you can still start with the bundle. The grunge will be in stock in two weeks. So this is 1040-24, primitive muslin, designed by Lisa Monjean, same designer. If you want something darker, this is 1040-43. So 42, 43. Now this is a grunge, and if you would like a grunge, this is 30150-385. So here's some options. 42, 1040-42, 1040-43, 30150-385. These two are primitive muslin, no, 1040-38, 30150-385. These two are primitive muslin. This one is grunge. Now I have not decided what I'm going to do in the sashing. I do think I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna be giving this quilt away. So I am going to probably go with a color, one of the lighter blues. I'm not really sure which, but I'm giving this away. So I'm gonna take into consideration what that person's decor looks like before I do the sashing. And speaking of all of this patriotic stuff, on Monday is Memorial Day. So we have some two different things to show you. One is our blast from the past, which is a previous finish feature. And I have it here. So this one is called William's Honor. And this was released, let's see last year I think, last year or the year before. It's called William's Honor. It uses branded fabric by Sweetwater. I'm gonna actually hold it up. It's actually named after my father. So my father's name is William. He served in the National Guard and my son's name is William. He's named after him. So here it is from the front. So we thought in remembrance of Memorial Day, this is a pattern that's free that you can get at Fat Quarter Shop. And it would look great 
in the fabric I just had out. So this would look great in American Gatherings. Sorry. So you could do the same quilt with that. Free pattern, finishes at 63 by 84, and we did design it with all of the Quilts of Valor size requirements in mind. So if you wanted to donate to Quilts of Valor, this is a free pattern, and we just wanted to show that. And then we also have a video of the week, which is 4th of July Quilt As You Go mini quilt. So that is the Williams Honor behind me that I just showed you. And then we have this video where you can quilt as you go and make a small one. Now you would need a flag fabric for this because this is not um, applique. It's just a small little quilt. And then I'm gonna answer questions. And I'm gonna do a little update from, sorry. Sorry, y'all just saw my stomach, sorry. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff here, guys. We need some more shelves. The one thing I did forget to show you guys, hold on, I'm gonna pick it up with my feet. It's 2600 RFL. So um, I'm using 2600 RFL for the American Gathering Stitch Along. So I need to take this back home. Whew, I'm out of breath. Okay, I'm gonna answer questions. I am gonna do follow-ups from last week. So two questions we had from last week are, when is French General's Jardin Back Quarter Bundle shipping? Next week. When is Boudoir by Basic Gray shipping? June. Anything coming in June from Moda is also quoted mid to late. Um, we did receive this this week though, strawberries and rhubarb, which I love. We received that in the Jolly Bar and we received smoke and rust in the Jolly Bar. And we do have a new kit called Squared Away. It's available in Lap and Queen and it uses H300 triangles on a roll paper. And I'm gonna show it to you right here. This fabric is beautiful. So this is a new kit. So pretty. So that's what we have that's new. And then I'm gonna answer questions. Is this going to be a kit? So the Squared Away is a kit, the Autumn Wonderland is a kit, and if it wasn't one of those, let me know and I'll answer. How do you do the stripes without waves? Okay. Okay, so I'll give you a couple tips to start. If you unroll a jelly roll, do not put all of your salvages together when you sew alternate so you would put the red salvage over here the white salvage over here because they're going a different direction and you'll get less waves i cut all of these wider and cut them down after i had my strip done and not only that i cut this bottom one oh my goodness i'm not sure what that noise is but it doesn't sound good so we're just gonna cross our fingers that everything is okay. Oh my goodness. But I did sew this one super long and so that if, so I made this bigger and I made this one bigger so that when I trimmed it, I could trim it down. How big is the new quilt kit? Um, I'll have to pull the pattern real quick. I think the pattern's right over there. The squared away pattern and I'll have to look and see what size it is. Mm -mm. Let me see. Where'd she go? Um, let's see. So that kit, the version that we just showed is 96 inches square. Actually, it's not. It's 60 by 72, but you could also make it in the 96 inch size. Sorry. Y'all have a lot of questions today and I'm fluffled. What will your family specifically do to show honor and remember an email on 
Memorial Day. So my family, we definitely talk about all the people who have served. I have several people in my family who have served uh, Vietnam. And we'll definitely talk about it as a company. We um, will mention it in our newsletter at somehow. I haven't even done the newsletter for next week. Can I get the Ultimate Beginner Quilt Pattern separate from the kit? Absolutely. It's completely free on our blog. Will there, will there be a Christmas in July? Yep. It just is going to be late. It might be Christmas in August. Can I get the ultimate? Oh, God, I answered that. Do you plan on getting more sizes of flying geese paper? Yes. What is the size of the blue block? I think it's six and a half. No. I think it's five and a half inches finished. What is the backing fabric on your Jolly Bar table runner? It is from Sunday Stroll. Is the Primitive Fat Gatherings flag a kit? No. So if you want to do this Primitive Gathering sew along right here, you would buy the Fat Quarter Bundle of American Gatherings and four to six yards background. How much backing do you need for the American Gathering stitch along? It's not listed on her blog. Do I have the book here? Oh, I have it. Okay. So I'm going to actually... The book says it's 67 by 70, so what's 160 divided by 36? That would be the answer. So she is saying four and a half yards for backing. What's 180 divided by 36? No, 140 divided by 36. No, 160 divided by 36. Four and a half, four and a half yards. Who's taking care of Piggy? Oh, he goes to a guy's house that lives in Dripping Springs. It's like out in the country and he uh, has like a home daycare for dogs and he loves my dog. Like he never likes my dog to leave. And I always say, does Piggy pee in your house? Cause he pees in mine. And he's like, he doesn't pee in mine. What size are the Jolly Bar quilts? Um, they're all different. Um, the ones in the book are all about a lap, kind of a crib to lap. Um, I did want to let you guys know that we have two new YouTube members, Art de Castora Atelier and Vicky Golich. And I did post a video for new members or for all members on our YouTube channel on last Monday. And that video has all of the new Moda collections, Riley Blake collections, and Free Spirit collections. We will show those on our channel on June 11th when I get back. As a reminder, I will not be here next Friday, but there will be a YouTube premiere so that you can still chat live and it will be a vlog tutorial on vlog 34 on Socialites. So you guys have a great week. Thanks for letting me video this on Thursday. I'll miss you next week, but I will be back in two weeks.